Welcome back to another rebuild I got for you guys today. Today, it is not going to be a rebuild of the Denver Broncos. That is going to come at a later time. This is going to be a fantasy draft rebuild. Once again, I've done one of these before, but only one. And I'm going to be doing it with the Broncos right now. It really doesn't matter which team I use, but somebody suggested that I use the Broncos for this one. So I figured I might as well do so. Also, if you guys remember from my last fantasy style rebuild, I decided to choose like the first 10 players or something like that in the draft. And this time I'm not going to do that. I'm literally just going to sim directly through the entire draft. I don't want to know who I got because like, I don't know, it kind of spoils the first pick especially. So I'm just going to see what pick I have. And there's no way I can sim this without it showing on the screen. So I'm kind of going to like, I'm just going to like turn around so I don't see what I get. You guys can believe me if, if, you know, if you want. I don't have any proof to show that I actually don't know who I got, but I just want to show you which pick I get if anybody's curious. So I got the first pick. <laughs> okay, so I'm pretty sure that means I want to get like Andrew Luck or Russell Wilson or something. They go super early. I actually got the first pick. I'm not lying. This is the first try. It's not like I was I was resetting this to try to get the first pick. I don't really think it's that big of an advantage to be honest, but um, yeah, this is the first try I'm doing this. Like I didn't have any other takes of this, I promise, but I'm going to sim the draft. I'm not going to look who I get, so I'm going to make sure I cut away before you guys can see who I got to, but I'll come back with the team. Here we are after the draft. I have not looked at the team yet. I have no clue who I have, so let's see who we got on the squad. Russell Wilson, Todd Gurley, Allen Robinson. Okay, that is a fantastic group on offense. We also have Kenny Stills and Keelan Cole. This team is phenomenal. I swear I did not make any of these draft picks. You saw, I'm pretty sure. Actually, I don't have any proof that I just simmed right through it, but I promise I did. I legitimately did not make any of these draft picks. Honestly, if I would have, I probably wouldn't have picked Russell Wilson. I know he's great and all, but I like drafting quarterbacks, if I'm being real, so I would not have picked him. I would have picked somebody on defense, probably, but Todd Gurley, Allen Robinson, Gronk, I didn't even see him there, Brandon Linder. Okay, this team is phenomenal. I didn't even do anything. This team is great. How's the defense? All right, the defense falls off quite a bit. I got Solomon Thomas. He's a great player to try to build around. Cornerbacks are not really there. Sidney Jones is cool to have. Sheldon Rankins is not bad. Michael Bennett, not great. Clay Matthews, Shea McClellan. Okay, I think you're pretty young, though. You're like 26. 28. Okay, I thought you were younger than that. Mark Barron, the option to move him up to safety if I really want to, but honestly, I don't even think he would be that good. Okay, so the defense is definitely not great, so this team could be a lot better. That is definitely for sure. So what I'm going to try to do is upgrade this team as much as I can. I still think I am going to trade this first season. I think I'm going to allow it because I definitely have some pieces that I could trade. Um, I'm going to try to get some first-round draft picks pri like primarily, and then maybe try to get some bits on defense because I would like a different middle linebacker. Maybe try to get a rookie, see how that plays out. Eric Weddle, I think I'm going to try to get rid of. He's great. Very, very good in real life and everything, but 32 years old, that's not great for a rebuild. Eric Reed isn't terrible. 25 years old. Um, he also, I think these players don't have their normal contracts. I'm pretty sure it's all dependent on when they got drafted, so I'm sure. I think Eric Reed is a pretty big contract. Uh, in this game normally, so he probably didn't get drafted too early, so I'm sure his contract is not that crazy, but Nikel Roby Coleman's actually a very good corner. I'm kind of glad that we got him. I never really use him that much, but he is very talented. Dark has Denard. Do you still have slow? Ugh, you still do have slow, so I might have to get rid of him. He has some pretty good stats, though, and Sidney Jones is still here. It's not terrible. Okay, so I'm going to try to make some moves. I'm not sure what kind of defense I want to run. I feel like I'm going to try to run a 3-4, just based on Solomon Thomas is a 3-4 guy. No, you're a 4-3 guy. I lied. I was wrong. Yeah, you're definitely a 4-3 guy. Michael Bennett, 4-3 guy apparently. I can probably trade him as well. So I'm going to get into some trades here, see what I can muster up. Determining whether or not a draft pick is going to be valuable is kind of hard to do in a fantasy draft because you don't really know how the teams are going to play. Uh, the Ravens looked pretty bad on offense. They had Jacoby Brissett as their quarterback, who's not you know a great overall. Not the best wide receiver core, so I tried to target them. So I'm giving the Ravens Carolyn Williams and this Jackson guy, I'm sorry I don't know his first name, for their first round draft pick. Lance Dunbar and Benny Logan will get me a first rounder from the Panthers. So it seems a bit more difficult to trade for players in this. I'm not sure if that's actually a thing or not, but it seems a little more difficult than I'm used to. But Clay Matthews, Eric Weddle, and Sean Harlow for John Johnson III. Mark Barron and Ray Melaluga for the Titans first rounder. I think it's Eugene Sims? That sounds right to me. Shea McClellan and Roy Helu for the Jaguars first rounder. I'm giving the Bears this Cofield guy and a third round draft pick for David Andrews, who I think I'm going to shift over to guard. Yeah, so I probably overtraded for this, but... These trades are being kind of weird right now. I feel like they're not as easy as they normally are, which I'm okay with. It makes it a little bit more challenging. But Darquez, Denard, and Michael Bennett for Quan Alexander. I think this is going to be the team for the first season here. It's actually not bad, especially on the offense. The defense is actually pretty bad, if, <laughs> if I'm being honest. But the offense is pretty talented. Russell Wilson, Todd Gurley, Allen Robinson didn't really have to change anything. 
on the offense. I did get, actually, David Andrews, so let me make sure he's starting at left guard, I think is what I was going to do, because I'd rather have Lane Taylor not start. I'd rather have um, Josh Klein start. I sh guess I should have just said that. I'd rather have Josh Klein start, so now the O-line looks a little bit better. It's still... Still would have been good without him, but he's not hard to get, so I figured I would give it a try. But yeah, the trades definitely seemed a bit more difficult. It might just be because it's the first season, and I normally don't trade all that much in my rebuilds during the first year. Most of my trades uh, usually come in the second season. Actually, I'm not even sure how true that is, but I know it's easier to trade in the second season. But here's the offense. I strung on that sentence for a while. I just kept saying butts in between there. Here is the defense, however. It is pretty bad looking, but Markel Lee, I have seen him do very well in simulation before. I've seen him win... Off, or defensive rookie of the year if he won offensive rookie of the year that would be phenomenal but I've seen him go off and win defensive rookie of the year before for the Raiders of course um, but the secondary is you know it'll get there soon I just need to draft a cornerback I think because Nickel Roby Coleman I think will be a fine nickel at some point because he's actually very good in that position there Sidney Jones I hope can develop pretty well that'd be that would be nice John Johnson I almost said Josh Johnson this is definitely John John Johnson I think will be a good free safety for us this entire time. Of course, he's a strong safety, but I moved him over here. And then Eric Reed, I think, can actually be a pretty good strong safety for us. This D-line needs some work. I think after a season, though, Solomon Thomas should go up decently because, of course, he has superstar development. And Sheldon Rankins, I think, has quick. Knowing Lee is normal. I think he had quick last season, but he's a very talented young defensive tackle. I'm fine with him. Andrew Billings is young as well. Uh, 75 overall is not great, but he is very young. And then Michael Bennett, actually. So I'm filling in Michael Bennett with Michael Bennett, but he's not going to be here for the long run for sure. Quan Alexander is filling right outside linebacker for us, which I think is nice. I could probably trade a couple of these guys for more draft picks, but I have like five first round draft picks, and I think that's going to be fine. Especially if I have to trade up in the draft. Like, let's say all those five draft picks are like late first rounders. If I want some guy early, I can still trade up easily. So it's not going to be that big of a deal. So I'm going to make sure all these guys are playing in the correct scheme, change the playbooks around, do all that good stuff, and change the experience sliders. I'm going to make sure I do that, and then I'll see you at the midseason. At the midseason mark here, we are 5-2. and two. Looks like the team is playing fairly well. We are in second in the division, though. The Raiders are in first. I don't remember if I have their draft pick or not, if I'm being honest. The Chargers are in third, and the Chiefs are in last. The offensive experience doesn't look too crazy. Russell Wilson, though, is playing with some confidence. That is always nice to see. And then on the defensive side, anybody have a lot? Solomon Thomas has 9,000. I'm going to spend that, actually. Superstar Dev gets you a lot of experience, so he should go up pretty nicely. I'm probably just going to get this all into awareness and play recognition. Yeah, it's easy enough. This is very cheap to upgrade, so I'll just do that. Get him up to an 82 overall. It's not bad at all. 82 overall defensive end with Superstar Dev I will definitely take. I really don't think I'm going to have to negotiate with anybody because it doesn't look like I want to bring anybody back here, considering the first person is James Ahedigebo. I never know how to pronounce his name. I'm not even lying, so don't want to bring him back. Ted Bowler, actually a very good fullback, but I'm not going to bring him back. I can always just, um, I can always just draft one. Markel Lee, though, I will bring back. I'm not sure why he's here. I will take him, though. Why not? All right, he's coming back to the team, just in case he wins, like, defensive rookie of the year or something. So, I want him. Darius Butler, I think I already mentioned I don't want. A oh, Darius Gunter, I don't want. Okay, none of these guys I want over here. I should also mention that I signed a couple random free agents once the season started. I signed Chris Wormley, who was apparently a 3-4 kind of guy, but looks like he can fit a 4-3 scheme decently well. He's pretty big, but 77 speed, 88 acceleration. He's actually very athletic. And then we also got Flowers over here. Marquise Flowers, fast guy with actually really good coverage stats. 79 zone coverage is not bad. He's, he's just going to be playing left outside linebacker for us. Don't think there's that much more to go over, so I'll see you at the end of the year. We did not make the playoffs. It's actually pretty surprising. Who regressed here? Matt Darr and Connor Barth. Okay, our special teams, guys. Regressed. That sucks a little bit, so I'm probably going to replace them, honestly, in free agency. We went 8-8. Eight and eight. We were 8-5 and five at week 15. That sucks. That means we lost our last three games, but 2-2 two two in the preseason. Won the opening five games and then lost a whole bunch. We lost four there. Beat the Bengals, lost against the Raiders, beat the Dolphins and the Jets, and then lost our last three. Like I said, that's a bit rough, but 8-8. Eight and eight. I think we can improve from here, though, so I'm not that worried about it. Russell Wilson had a very, very good season, though. 4,500 yards pretty much, 37 touchdowns, 10 interceptions. Fantastic season. Todd Gurley, 13 touchdowns, 1,445 yards. Five fumbles, though. Uh, Jeremy Langford only got four touchdowns, and he had less yards than Russell Wilson, actually. Receivers, Kenny Stills did okay, 91 catches, 896 yards, four touchdowns. Allen Robinson gets over 1,100 yards with nine touchdowns. Gronk gets nine touchdowns, and Keelan Cole gets seven. Blocking, what's this all about? Joe Staley lets up 11 sacks. Morgan Moses lets up five. That's not bad at all. Markel Lee at 166 tackles. I'm hoping that is enough. 
for defensive rookie of the year because I got the linebacker upgrade, so I hope he has a lot of experience. Solomon Thomas got seven uh, tackles for loss. That's pretty good. Sheldon Rankins at five. Sacks, we got 13 from Andrew Billings, 11 from Solomon Thomas, 11 and a half, my bad, and 11 from Chris Wormley. We actually got to the quarterback pretty well here. It's actually cool to see. Interceptions, we got six from Nikel Roby Coleman, two from Eric Reed and Marquise Flowers, one from Markel Lee. Marquise Flowers actually played a decent amount. That worries me that Quan Alexander didn't play them, but Sharice Wright got one, Sidney Jones got one, and so did John Johnson. So I want to see something quick. Did, I should probably go by tackles. Did Quan Alexander play a lot? He did play a lot. He got 132 tackles. Okay, so I am in the Vikings scheme currently, their defense, so maybe this defensive scheme makes the outside linebackers play a bit more? The Vikings for sure have a 4-3 defense. I checked a couple times just to make sure, but we were 6th on offense, but 32nd on defense. Um, MVP goes to Le'Veon Bell on the Raiders. Russell Wilson comes in 2nd, though, not bad at all. AFC Offensive Player of the Year goes to Le'Veon Bell. Russell Wilson comes in 2nd. Anybody else from the Broncos? Todd Gurley's in there at number 8. Defensive player of the year. Markel Lee comes in second. I hope he got a lot of experience. That would be amazing. Nobody else on our team comes on that list. Offensive rookie of the year does go to Deshaun Watson. We have Keelan Cole there at number nine. Defensive rookie of the year does go to Markel Lee. That is beautiful to see. Solomon Thomas comes in fourth. Chris Wormley comes in sixth. And Sidney Jones comes in ninth. It would be sweet if like Chris Wormley made a Pro Bowl or something because then maybe our defensive end position would be kind of okay. But let's check the offensive experience. Russell Wilson looks like he has the most with 20,000. Todd Gurley has 19,500. That's not bad at all. Then on the defense, Markel Lee got 55,000 in development trait. Got quick development from that. That is sick. He is definitely going to be a solid middle linebacker for the rest of this. At least, maybe I'll move him to outside linebacker or something. But he's going to be a solid player on the team. Andrew Billings got 29,000. Is that a Pro Bowl? Definitely looks like one to me. It is a Pro Bowl appearance. That's nice to see. Chris Warmly only got 13,000. Honestly, I thought he was going to get a bit more. I keep going too far past this. I thought he was going to get a little bit more. Solomon Thomas has 17,000. Nikel Roby Coleman has 37,000. That's a Pro Bowl for sure. That is a Pro Bowl appearance. Nice to see. Sharice Wright, oh, only 6,000. But we actually have a lot of experience going around, so this first season was definitely not a disappointment. I'm just showing this quickly. I want to bring back Chris Wormley because he actually played well. So not giving him that contract. I always almost do that with some players, but I'm not going to do that. Just give him this kind of contract. Is he going to take it? He is going to take the contract. That's nice to see. So hopefully he goes up decently. So if I can't get another defensive end, I at least have him. We are about to be in free agency here though, but I highly doubt anybody, you know, worth noting will be here. Let me just skim it quickly just to show you guys, but I don't think anybody good is going to be here. Exactly what I thought was going to happen. Maybe I'll go after some random players, but I'll see you guys in the draft. This draft class is not the greatest, if I'm saying so myself. The positions we really need, there are not many players in those positions. Like linebacker, for example, I'll show you guys really quickly. There are not many good linebackers in this draft. From what I found, I really did not find any. These guys all kind of suck, right? And there's a couple like green interest, or not, not green interest. There's a couple like green guys down here, right? But like, that doesn't mean they're going to be phenomenal. A couple good combine grades. Like this guy doesn't look terrible for his for his like hit power and stuff, but he's not going to have a good overall. Nobody else is that great. Like I have not found many good uh, linebackers in this draft. This is like the best one and he's not even that phenomenal. But with this pick, I'm actually going to go with a left tackle in case Joe Staley decides to retire. I will definitely have a very solid backup. So Jackson Plackenmeyer, I might even trade Joe Staley and just keep this guy because this guy's a phenomenal combine grade. Pretty good bench press reps. 34 is definitely very, very good. Good top three skills as well. B plus impact block, B pass block, C plus run block. I normally don't take offensive linemen this early in drafts, but again, there's not many good late offensive linemen. I'll show you guys here. There's a couple decent centers over here, but not really that worried about my center position that much. So not many good guys here. I mean, there's this dude, right, who looks pretty good as well, but the other guy just looks a lot better if I'm being honest. So I'm going to go with him, Jackson Plackenmeyer. He is a 74 overall normal development, ranked 17th in the class. But I think it's just because of the scheme. I feel like if I put into a pass blocking scheme, he will be almost an 80. I'm going to be trading away this draft pick here just to get some value for next season. That looks great with the Bears. The Browns are probably not going to have the first overall pick next year. I'm actually not sure what pick they have. They have 14th. Don't they have two though? I have no idea where the other pick is. The Jets have the first overall pick next year. And the Browns actually could have a decent draft pick. I'm not sure if that's them or not. If that's their pick or not, I should, I should say. But let me see any teams look like they're going to have decent draft picks. Okay, so the 49ers look like the front runner for the pick I'm going to take. Because that's a third this year and a first next year. What pick do they have? Let me just check really fast. If it's a decent pick, I might go with that. 
It is not. They did not draft yet, so I feel like they have a decent team already. I'm just going to go with one of these picks. I don't really care all that much, to be honest. So the Bears, I'm just going to take the Bears. It's kind of hard to gauge where teams are going to be next season, so I'm going to trade down with the Bears there, and then my next pick, hopefully, is going to come back with a... I'm not actually too sure yet. A cornerback, I think? I want this corner. This is not this guy. That's a center. That guy looks pretty good, too. He also has superstar dev. I might take him eventually, but Demarcus Burgess is actually going to be the player I'm going with now because he's the only decent-looking corner in this entire draft class that I found. He might have slow development because he's a prototype, you know, type cornerback, but with a very slow 40. It's not very slow, but slow for a prototype corner. So he might not be the greatest, but I'm going to take a, take a gamble on him. 78 overall was slow. I was right, but I have seen slow developing cornerbacks absolutely go off. So I'm not going to write this guy off yet. He might be decent. I have two more picks in the first round here. I'm actually going to take them both, I think. Okay, so this guy has superstar development. But I know nothing about his zone coverage, so I don't know if I want him. I think Eric Reed might still be decent, but I kind of want another superstar on the team, if I'm being honest. This guy could be like a 73 overall, though. That's the only problem. I want this center. Okay, so the wide receiver went. There was a wide receiver down here that I wanted, but I definitely want this center because he's going to have superstar development. 80 overall superstar development. I will make sure this guy starts somewhere. And with my next pick, if that safety's there, I'll take him. I think he just got drafted. Did he just get, did, did he just get drafted? He did. Okay, so I'm going to trade away this pick and then take some players here. Actually, do I want to trade this away? Because I kind of want mid first round. Wait, mid first rounder? Huh, that guy's really fast. Early second rounder. I'm going to take this guy. I'm actually going to take this guy. What are you all about? 78 overall normal development. 87 speed. I'll have to really see what I want to do. Because I still have Chris Wormley. But he might not go up that much. He only had like 13,000 experience and he was a 72 overall. So he might not go up that much. I have no reason to keep this second round pick. So I'm just going to trade it away and then probably take the remainder of my players. And maybe just take some shots in the dark. To end off the draft. This draft class was not very good. I don't know if I mentioned that yet, but it really was not anything crazy. This Bengals pick looks pretty good. A third, a fourth, and a seventh this year. That's a second next year from the Bears. That's a second from the Browns. That's a second this year from the Browns? Yeah, all right. Well, I'm not going to take that, actually. Was that a second this year, too? That was a second this year and a seventh. Wait, hold on. That's a third and a fourth this year still. Okay, I'm getting my draft years mixed up. I kind of just want next year stuff. That looks pretty good to me, to be honest. That's the same thing, but just better. So I might as well just take that. That's even better. Okay. A lot of very similar draft picks around here. But I think the Ravens is the one I'm going to go with. Because that's a second next year, a third next year, and a third still this year. And with that third this year, I will trade down once more. No. Should I trade down? I'm just going to take a player. I kind of don't feel like trading down anymore. There is also a phenomenal running back in this draft class. I might try to find him afterwards and see what he was all about because he looked amazing, but I'm going with this guy. You any good? 67 overall. Okay, he is horrible, but I really didn't feel like trading this pick down again because I think I have a decent amount of picks for next season. I'll probably trade down a couple late in the draft. In the fourth round here, I'm just going to take this random defensive end, see if he's any good. Uh, he looks pretty strong. Maybe he can shift over to defensive tackle. I don't know. 73 overall normal development. Not a bad looking player at all. But I don't think he's going to start because that other defensive end we drafted is just a better version of that guy. I think he was honestly better in every single category, even strength. Because, oh, actually, no. I actually don't know about strength. I don't think the guy we drafted earlier was that strong, but he still looked decent. But uh, Marquise Bags is going to be my fourth round selection, another fourth round selection here. He doesn't look bad, 24 years old. Usually prototype defensive tackles are decent. I've had pretty good experiences with them, but let's see what this guy's all about. 71 overall. Not bad. Good acceleration, though. Uh, he's not a bad player whatsoever but like i said earlier the late round talent in this draft just really wasn't there maybe he was just in positions i didn't scout because i didn't fully scout cornerbacks like as much as i would love i would have liked to but uh kelvin belukitty don't know how to pronounce that but you're going on to the squad now 69 overall not a fantastic player once again but he'd be a decent defensive end but he's not going to shift down there and then i have one last player i'm going to take here and it's going to be a fullback I also might take a punter because I still need a punter. I went after Sam Martin in free agency and he actually declined. So maybe I'll just go after a random punter. But Stefan Barker, amazing player, 81 overall. Quick development. You usually don't see a, any kind of development trait on these guys, but I'll take it. Hey, there's a punter I got. Paul Sands. He's actually not bad at all. Really low awareness, really low strength, but that doesn't really matter too much. But 69 overall, I'll take it. I'm just showing you here that I'm going to trade down my final pick in the draft. I can't really go off of any of these projections, so... I'm just going to go through randomly, close my eyes, and I'm going to take this one. 
Fourth rounder from the Ravens. Okay, I got other draft picks from the Ravens as well, so they're kind of stripped down. This was the running back I referenced earlier. This guy looks very good. 90 speed, 90 trucking, 93 stiff arm, 91 carrying. Very, very good power back here. 87 agility is not terrible. He's actually a very good power back for the for the Cowboys there. Oh man, this is that safety I missed out on. This guy's a beast. We didn't know anything about his zone coverage, but it happened to be a 76. This guy's really good. I would have loved to have him, actually. Joe Staley, Josh Klein, and a third rounder for Brandon Cooks. I feel like I don't get this player a lot, but I'm getting him now. One last trade here, I think. It's going to be Lane Taylor, Keelan Cole, and a third rounder for Anthony Barr. Here's the team going into the second season. I like what it looks like. We have some pieces here that I think can get us into the postseason. Got a couple rookies playing on the offense, like... Um, what's your first name? Jackson Plackenmeyer, the rookie left tackle. He went up to a 79 overall in the correct scheme. That is always nice to see. And then Supernaw, Logan Supernaw, playing center. Uh, superstar developing center out of Texas. Great player there. I think these guys can play perfectly fine. I didn't really feel that bad getting rid of Joe Staley because he was probably going to retire after this season anyway. He's a very good left tackle, but I think this rookie can come in and almost go up to the same overall as Joe Staley after this season. The rest of the offense, I think, is unchanged. I guess, I mean, Brandon Cook's here. And then, what's your name? Stefan Barker is our new starting fullback. So, offense just looks a bit better. And then the defense got a lot better, I think, because Quam, I almost said we got Quan Alexander. We actually had him. We got Anthony Barr playing right outside linebacker. Markel Lee went up to an 84 overall. He has no power moves, though. I should probably try to get those up a little. I don't really think that matters that much. And then this D-line, I think, would I would argue we got better because Andrew Billings is now an 82 overall. He's actually a very good defensive tackle on this squad. We got Barron over here. What's your first name? Kevin Barron. I feel like when I was drafting this guy, I said like Kelvin or something. Definitely Kevin. I don't know. But he looks very good as a speed rusher defensive end. 87 speed. I'll actually have to make sure he's in the correct scheme because I think he's in balanced 4-3 right now. And I feel like if I put him into a speed rusher scheme, he might go up. We also have this slow developing cornerback. But my last slow developing cornerback I drafted went up to like a 95 after his second season. So um, I have... Uh, I have big aspirations for this guy. I think he can do pretty well. Sidney Jones is still playing in the nickel corner spot. And Nikel Roby Coleman, who probably should be playing there, is still playing the number one because he had a crazy season last year. So without further ado, I'm going to send to the midseason mark. And I just noticed that I say without further ado all the time. So somehow we are worse at the midseason than we were last year. I feel like this team should be pretty good, but we are in third in the division. We definitely still have a shot at making the playoffs. The Raiders are in first, Chargers are in second, and the Chiefs are in last. So let's check out the offense. How is this side of the ball doing? Russell Wilson looks like he's playing pretty well. Nobody else looks like they're doing that well. I guess the center has like 9.4 thousand experience, which is cool to see, but nobody on the defense looks like they're having a crazy season either. So I'm going to spend this experience quickly on the center, see what I can get him up to. His awareness is probably not fantastic, and that is exactly right. What's his injury? He actually has decent injury. So I'm going to get his awareness up and then his pass block up. Can't do anything else, but 82 overall, that's fine. Very talented center. So let's see if we have to bring anybody back. We have Andrew Billings, I think. I'll definitely negotiate with him. Xavier Grimble, not really worried about. Trent Taylor, not really worried about. So Andrew Billings is like the only guy here that I truly want. Let's see if he comes back to the team. He is. That is nice to see. And now I will see you at the end of the year. So yet again, we did not make the playoffs, but Russell Wilson wins MVP. What is going on? 9-7. and seven. Okay, so did a little bit better. I don't know how this team is not making the playoffs, if I'm being honest. 2-2 two two in the preseason, lost the opening game, beat the Chargers, lost against the Bengals, beat the Seahawks, lost two there, 1-3, one, lost one, 1-1, one, one, lost one, lost one, two. I don't really know how this team isn't making the playoffs. I feel like this team is super talented, but maybe the defense is just playing really badly. But Russell Wilson, 4,573 yards, 38 touchdowns, 8 picks. Phenomenal season from him. Definitely deserves the MVP. Todd Gurley, 18 touchdowns, 1,413 yards, 2 fumbles. Okay, Russell Wilson also had four rushing touchdowns, only one fumble, and Wendell Smallwood, who I signed, had six touchdowns, zero fumbles. Receivers, Kenny Stills leads the team in catches once again, 94, catches 839 yards, eight touchdowns. Allen Robinson leads the team in yards, 1,228 yards, five touchdowns, and Brandon Cooks gets over 1,000 yards with 10 touchdowns. Rob Gronkowski gets five touchdowns as well. Sacks, 15 let up from a rookie left tackle. is actually not that bad, if I'm being completely honest. Usually I feel like they let up more. That's not fantastic, but I feel like they normally let up more. Markel Lee at 155 tackles. That's very good. Eric Reed, 105. Anthony Barr, 105 as well. We got six tackles for loss for Andrew Billings, five from Sheldon Rankins. Did we just get no pressure? Yeah, the pressure is terrible. What happened? I didn't even change anything on the defense. I don't know what happened. Anthony Barr, two picks. Josh, or John Johnson, two picks. Eric Reed, one. Nikela Roby Coleman, one. Okay, so I figured out why we did so badly. The defense just is not playing well. One touchdown, though, for Eric Reed. 
This defense is terrible. I need to upgrade a lot next season if I want this team to play. Well, second on offense, but 26 on defense. Okay, so the defense did technically be get better. Russell Wilson wins MVP. Todd Gurley's in there at number eight. AFC Offensive Player of the Year does go to Russell Wilson. Todd Gurley's in third. Nobody else from the Broncos. Defensive Player of the Year. Markel Lee is in fifth, actually. Offensive Rookie of the Year. Anybody from our team? Don't see anybody. Defensive Rookie of the Year. Demarcus Burgess and Kevin Barron are number three and number four, respectively. And Neil Dowering? Is number 10. I think he might be one of like the defensive ends we drafted later or something like that. But let's see what the experience looks like. Russell Wilson got 29,000. Brandon Cooks got 42,000. That's random. What about the defense? Anybody have a lot here? Mark Lee, good amount. Nobody else has a lot. Anthony Barr actually has a good amount. This team's not playing well on defense. I think the defense is actually decent. It's not great. I know it's not great, but I think it's actually decent enough for it to be playing well. Maybe I'll try to mess with like the defensive scheme for this last season or the second last season if I need to do that. I'll see what I have to do. I am in free agency here. We have exactly $58 million in cap room, but there is nobody great. George Kittle is interesting, but I definitely don't need a tight end. Jesse James, another decent tight end. Don't need really any of these guys. This is not a bad um, a bad free agency period, but I just, I just don't need any of these people. I have positions, well, I have good players in like the best positions here, so I'm not gonna worry about anybody here. I'm trading up in this draft here. I'm giving the Chiefs the 31st overall pick and Kyle Sloter, I feel like your name's Kyle, I don't know, for their first round draft pick now, it's actually pick three, and with this draft pick, I'm going to be taking a safety, a strong safety who has superstar development and looks very good. A minus hit power is fantastic, B zone, B pursuit all look very good. What are you all about? 80 overall, superstar development. He has a very good man coverage too. He would be a decent corner, but don't really want him to play corner. So I don't really know what I'm gonna do with Eric Reed yet. I might trade him for a corner because honestly, the corners aren't great in this draft. There's a decent one. I might try to trade up for him. I'm actually gonna do that. I'm gonna try to trade up for him. All right, I added one more player and it actually works. So I'm giving them my 20th pick, that bags dude and this dowering guy for their pick right now. And with this pick, I'm going to be drafting a cornerback who does not look great again, but he looks like the best cornerback in this class. And I think he has superstar development. The more that I think about it, I think he actually does have superstar development. So I'm gonna go with him here. 82 overall superstar dev. Okay, this guy is actually very good. 97 acceleration. That's phenomenal. 89 main coverage too. I didn't even see that. I'm going to draft a running back here because this guy looks really good. Okay, 81 overall. He's going to be my backup running back. I think this is going to be the last pick I'm taking in this draft. Randall O'Neal. I don't know where I'm going to play this guy. Because he looks really good. He's super fast. Has very good top three skills. I think he's going to be a beast. 77 with superstar. I have to play this guy somewhere, but I don't want to not start Markel Lee because he has been going off. He's getting, he's like our best defensive player. He's been getting so many tackles for us and he's consistently in defensive player of the year. So I really don't want to not start him. I'll have to check on that guy's coverage and maybe I'll move like Anthony Barr or Quan Alexander. I would move Quan Alexander to safety, but I just drafted a safety. So there's not really a reason to do that. And I don't really want to trade Quan Alexander. I'll figure something out. But I'll, I'll try to make sure that guy plays. But here, I'm, let's just take this guy. He's a crazy combine. Okay. He's really talented. Has a bad development trait, but he is really talented. I'm just going to be taking random players here. Or maybe trading away picks. I'm actually going to trade away a couple. But I'll probably just be taking some random players. Let me just see something quick. If there's any like decent offensive linemen just to get some good picks. Because like I really don't need any players anymore. Okay, well, there's this guy. He'll be pretty good. Um, any other defensive linemen? Defensive lineman, offensive lineman. This guy's actually probably pretty decent, too. I can probably take him with my next pick or something. This guy's decent. I'll probably finish the draft with those guys just to get some depth. Potential trade value, to be honest. And here, I'm just going to trade it away for a third rounder. Okay. Third and a seventh. I saw that. I'll probably take the third and a seventh. Yep, that just seems really simple to me. And now with the final picks here, I'm just going to take those guys. They're probably all going to be good. If any of them are are outstanding. I guess I'll keep it in the video, but I don't feel like wasting your time. Eric Reed and two third rounders for Adoree Jackson. I'm getting a player I don't think I've ever traded for before, so I'm giving the Giants three drafted players, actually. Two of these guys were drafted this year, I think, but Burgess, or Burgess, however it's pronounced, was the slow developing corner I had. Collins is a right tackle I think I drafted this year, and Perry, I think, is a left guard I drafted this year. All that for Melvin Ingram. So I kind of just didn't talk over this. I don't know why, but I gave the Packers... Sheldon Rankins, a fourth rounder this year and a third rounder next year for Michael Brockers. Might look like a weird trade, right? Because Sheldon Rankins is a young, good defensive tackle, but he's not really playing that well for us. And I think Michael Brockers can do a little better. I mean, 
usually if a defensive tackle has a great season, the stats don't really reflect it that much, but I feel like they do in Madden, if that makes any sense. Like in the actual NFL, if a defensive tackle is dominant, the stats really don't show, like they don't have insane stats. You just have to watch kind of how they play. But I feel like in Madden, the only way to tell if a defensive tackle plays well is if they have really good stats. I don't know. That's just me. I could be wrong, but I think Michael Brockers can play well. And it just didn't seem like um, Sheldon Rankins was getting it done. So Michael Brockers is going to be our defensive tackle now. He should be pretty good overall. He's a 90. I was kind of hoping he would go up well. This is essentially what the team is going to look like. I'm actually going to move Nikel Roby Coleman into the nickel spot. Hopefully that makes him play a little better because this is my superstar developing corner. I want to start. And then that was the defense shortly, but I want to go over the offense first just to keep kind of continuity here. But um, I think what I'm going to do here is actually have it have um, Brandon Cooks be the number one, Allen Robinson be the number two, and Kenny Stills be the slot. The reason for this is because I've had Allen Robinson playing the number two a couple times and he goes off. So I want to, I kind of hope that happens again. I want to see if it happens again. Uh, but of course, we still got Russell Wilson, Brandon McManus, apparently is our backup quarterback. Look at those kicking stats for a quarterback. Phenomenal now. But <laughs> we have Todd Gurley here, of course, still. And Towns, who is that rookie we drafted, just as a backup. He looks pretty good. Offensive line is decent. I like it a lot. I don't know if I want to change the offensive scheme or not. I'll show you what scheme I was rolling with. This game works pretty well sometimes, usually if run the Cowboys offense with spread offense. I'm going to switch this back to what I used to do a lot. And let's see if this works for this last season. So I used to go Pittsburgh offensive playbook and then vertical offense. That's kind of what I've done, what I used to do. Not really as much anymore, but that's what's going to happen for this season here. I hope it works well. That's the offense, and then the defense I'll go over quickly. I kind of already went over it, but it looks very good in my opinion. I think this team should make the playoffs, but we got LeBlanc here. LeBlanc, that's really... French, I pronounced that terribly, but Tyrone LeBlanc, okay. But he is going to be our strong safety. Very, very good player here. 88 speed, not bad. Pretty much right around where you, like the like the threshold for a safety speed is like, I would say like 87 to like, 87 up really. Of course, there's no really max speed you would want for it. You just, 99 would be like the most you would want. But I feel like the lowest speed you should be looking for in like a, a safety is like 86. I think John Johnson's actually quite slow. 85 speed, okay, well, technically he doesn't, fit in my threshold, but he's a good overall, but this guy's very good. 84 zone coverage, 92 hit power, 91 acceleration, 80 or 76 man coverage, almost said 86. The only issue with this defense, right, is like, I want this guy to start really badly. He is a freak. He's very talented, very athletic. He is a god. His zone coverage is 74. That's not even bad, but I don't think it's a wise idea to have him start over any of these guys here because Markel Lee, first off, he is being my middle linebacker. I don't care what happens. He is a god in simulation. He went up to an 86 from a 71. He is a freak in simulation. So I'm definitely keeping him exactly where he is. Anthony Barr and Quan Alexander, they really haven't given me any reasons to not want to start him. Also, this is that outside linebacker or that um, defensive end. I moved him up here to try to trade him because nobody really wanted him as a D end and nobody wants him as an outside linebacker either. So yeah, what I was saying is I don't want to start this rookie over Quan Alexander or Anthony Barr because this team somehow didn't make the playoffs the past two years and I don't want to try to risk that anymore. I just want to try to get into the playoffs and have a good postseason with this team. This D-line looks a little better now. Now that we have Melvin Ingram, he is a right end, so I'm just going to shift Solomon Thomas over to left end. Melvin Ingram is the better player, so might as well let him, you know, stay at the position he came as. I'll make sure all these schemes are correct before I simulate as well, but pretty much that's what the defense looks like. I'll show you special teams too, why not? So yeah, we got Brandon McManus and we got this Two year? Okay, well, he played last year. This punter that we drafted. He's a guy. Brandon Cooks is our kick returner as well. Okay, but this is the team. I will spend the coach experience the, the decent amount that I have, actually. 4.2 thousand is actually a good amount. And then I will make sure the schemes are correct and see you at the end of the year. At the end of the season here, we made the playoffs. 7,200 coach experience and Russell Wilson wins MVP. How did we do? 12 and 4. Great season here. One of these times, man, I will go 16-0. Has not happened yet, but we went 3-0-1 in the preseason. We won the opening three games, lost to the Raiders, beat the Bengals, lost to the Jaguars, three-game win streak there, lost to the Chargers, 1-2, lost one, and then won the last three. Good way to end the season there. At least we made the playoffs this last year. I like to see it. Russell Wilson wins two MVPs. That's nice. How do you play this season? 5,035 yards, 40 touchdowns, eight picks. That is a fantastic season. Todd Gurley, 11 touchdowns, zero fumbles. I'll take it. 1,371 yards. Okay, I thought that was Russell Wilson for a second. I just saw 10 touchdowns. I was going to say, if he had 10 rushing touchdowns too, but Deshaun Towns gets 10, and then Russell Wilson gets 6 of his own. That's not bad at all. Receivers, Brandon Cooks, 101 catches, 1,472 yards, 13 touchdowns. 
Hopefully that's wide receiver of the year. Looks like it could be. Allen Robinson gets over 1,000 yards, 5 touchdowns. Kenny Stills nearly gets 1,000 yards, 4 touchdowns. And Gronk gets 7 touchdowns there. Blocking, 12 sacks lit up from Jackson, Black, and Meyer. It's nice to see some sort of improvement. Morgan Moses, not the best season from him. 10 lit up, that's not bad, but definitely some regression there. Markel Lee went down in sack numbers, but a hundred, not sack numbers, tackle numbers, but 122 is still not bad. I also changed the defensive scheme. I moved to the Saints scheme, I think. Am I in the Saints? Am I either in the Saints or just a 4-3 defense? I think it's actually the Saints, though. But 9 tackles for loss for Melvin Ingram and Michael Brockers. Not bad sacks. 14.5 for Melvin Ingram. 14 from Solomon Thomas. Interceptions. 5 from Adoree Jackson. Also, he has 99 zone coverage. I don't want to show this yet, just so I don't spoil the experience, but he does. He has 99 zone coverage. That's insane. He still has, like, 70 press or something like that. But 3 from John Johnson. 2 from Tyrone LeBlanc, the rookie. 1 from Anthony Barr. My voice cut out in the middle of that sentence, so I'm not sure if I kept that whole part in the video, but 1 pick from Nikel Roby Coleman and 1 from Grodd Green. I don't really remember when my voice cut out, but it did somewhere. So, let's check the touchdowns. Did we get any? We did not. That is okay, but the defense looks like they played well. We were first on offense. Show me, like, 10th on defense. Second on defense. Okay, this team, phenomenal team here. Russell Wilson, MVP. Of course, we already saw that. Uh, Tad Gurley does not make it, but Offensive Player of the Year for the AFC, Russell Wilson is in there. Tad Gurley is right there at number 7. Nice to see. Charles Hebert. Okay. Defensive Player of the Year. We got Melvin Ingram at number 5, and then we got Solomon Thomas at number 10. Offensive Ricky of the Year. Deshaun Towns, our running back, comes in second. Wade Columbus. What a name. Uh, anybody else from our team in here does not look like it. Defensive Rookie of the Year. Tyrone LeBlanc, the rookie. Free, of course he's a rookie. The rookie strong safety wins it. That's cool. Garad Green comes in second. He was a cornerback. So usually I've seen this mess up before where it says like a player wins it and then the player in second actually wins it. So I don't actually care who wins it out of those two guys because they both have superstar devs. So they probably both have a lot of experience. I'm sorry if you heard that door closed, by the way. But best quarterback, Russell Wilson doesn't win that, but he wins MVP. Okay, I don't know what Patrick Mahomes did, but must have had a crazy season. Todd Gurley comes in fourth for best running back. Best wide receiver, Odell wins that. Hold on, is he on the same team as Patrick Mahomes? He is. Okay, so Odell probably just had a ridiculous season. I'll check it out then after this and show you guys. But Brandon Cooks comes in second. Because I'm usually kind of curious to see how other teams play. It's actually kind of cool to see. David DeCastro gets the best offensive lineman. Brandon Linder is actually in second there, though. David Andrews is in fifth. The Steelers, man. How do they not do well? Nine and seven. They look like they have a very good offense. Maybe their defense isn't the greatest. But Melvin Ingram comes in third. I think that was our problem the past two years. Solomon Thomas comes in eighth there. Eighth there. Almost forgot to mention him. Best linebacker goes to Shaquille Barrett. All right. Maybe he had a lot of sacks. That's my guess. But Broncos, nobody here for middle linebacker. Or just linebacker in general, actually. Best defensive back. We got a Dory Jackson there at number four. Nobody else from our team. Best kicker. Do we have anybody on here? Anybody. We only have one kicker. What am I talking about? Uh, Brandon McManus did not make it. But let me see what Patrick Mahomes did. Because I'm actually really curious to see... If he did better than Russell Wilson. So let's see. 5,000 yards, pretty much 40 touchdowns, 8 picks. Okay. Okay, that's my, that's actually a lot better. I think Russell Wilson had exactly 40 touchdowns. Is that right? Yeah, okay. So Patrick Mahomes definitely deserved that. He had, I think, more yards, more touchdowns, and less interceptions. How did he not win MVP? Did he not rush as well? He didn't have any rushing touchdowns. So I think it all boils down to that. But that is a crazy season. What did Odell do? Okay, 1,546 yards, 13 touchdowns. I can see that. Wow, they have a crazy group of wide receivers. Zay Jones is probably actually pretty good overall. Let me actually check that out. 82 overall with quick development. Okay, anyway, <laughs> I don't know why I'm caring about the Steelers so much, but they, looks like, they actually look like they have a good team. I'm not sure how they didn't make the playoffs. But we got 19K from Russell Wilson, 25K from Brandon Cooks, 42,000 from the center. That is great. A lot of experience going around everywhere. Also, I want to reference this too because somebody asked me in my comment section why my players get so much experience. I'll just show you my experience sliders. They're literally just all on 150. Um, I didn't do it this time, but usually I'll put the fullbacks up to 300 and the kickers and the punters up to 300 just because why not? You know, they don't get much experience at 150, so 300, 300 really doesn't make them go up that much, to be honest. But yeah, these are what my sliders look like. I messed around with them earlier. I put them on like 130, 120. I think it's just more fun to have on 150, if I'm being honest. A lot of other rebuilders use around 150. Um, I'm pretty sure Bengal uses more than 150, I think. I could be wrong, so don't quote me on that. But I think he uses more than 150. I'm not like criticizing him for that either. I'm just pointing it out. I don't think that's that big of a deal that I use 150. But LeBlanc has 38,000 experience. Nice to see. Nobody else really has all that much. I mean, 19K here is nice. 12K here, 10K here. Okay, so 20k from Adore Jackson too. Okay, so it's not that bad. Did Nikel Roby Coleman get a pick? I didn't even take notice. I feel like he did, but he had a crazy start and he kind of just fell off a bit. 
six picks here in 2017, then one each of his last two seasons. Okay, so I'm going to spend this experience and I'll see you at, actually, I'll see you after that. So here's a look at the team before I send by the week here. I think this team looks very good. Uh, I think this team should definitely at least make it to the Super Bowl, but you know how Madden simulation goes sometimes. But before I get too into this, I want to mention the word I would like you guys to comment. This is one of the latest times I've had to say the word. I usually just say it the first season I make the playoffs, and it took me until now to do so. So comment Gazelle if you are still watching, and uh, I'll greatly appreciate it, obviously, since this is late in the video. Thank you very much for making it this far. If you did, I'll make sure to, you know, love all those comments and respond to a couple like I did last time. But anyway, I'm going to go into this team here. So team looks very good. A lot of A-pluses going around the board here on offense. Uh, I don't know if we have any 99s. We have Brandon Cooks, who's a 99 with confidence. Todd Gurley is a 99 without confidence. Um, this center went up to a 95. This guy met some kind of goal because he had like 45k experience. Brandon Linder's a 94. Russell Wilson's a 97. Fantastic team looking here. And then on the defense, uh, the safety went up to a 92. He has 93 zone coverage, 93 hit power with confidence. He looks phenomenal. This corner went up to an 88. I don't think anybody else went up tremendously. Actually, Dory Jackson's up to a 97. Like I mentioned earlier, he has 99 zone and 96 man. I didn't mention the man part, but he has 99 zone. That is phenomenal. So I'm going to send by the week here, see who we have to take on. We have to take on the Raiders, actually a divisional rival. I'm going to advance the week here. Hopefully we can take down the Raiders. I think Phillip Rivers is on their team, and we do take them down. I'm actually going to go over the games once I'm done simulating. So we have to take on the Bills here. I'm just going to go straight to the Super Bowl. Let's see if we are in the... I should have checked the record. I always forget to do that, and we're not in the Super Bowl. I always forget to check the record. So it turns out we lost to the Bills. Let's check out by how much postseason we lost by four points that sucks and we beat the Raiders by 14 points yes that is 14 points my bad I keep forgetting to check the overalls I don't know any of any other way to do it if you guys know let me know in the comments the only way I know of checking the overalls by going into the game that is my fault if I had to guess I feel like this team would be like a 95 I don't think you can really get higher than that I've had teams that were 99 offense 99 defense and they're still like a 94 overall so I don't think there's any way of getting to a 99 unless you have a 99 rated player I think at like every position but Russell Wilson five touchdowns in this game very good game for him Phillip Rivers struggled like crazy three picks uh, Todd Gurley 101 yards very efficient game Le'Veon Bell at two touchdowns Alex Collins had three touchdowns I had five rushing touchdowns as a team and Deshaun Towns got one as well Gronk had two touchdowns good game from him Brandon Cooks had one Kenny Stills had one and Allen Robinson also had one so let's check out the uh you know the worst game here because I ended up losing to the Bills Charles Hebert what a legend he went to Penn State too that's pretty funny three touchdowns two touchdowns for Russell Wilson one pick for him he actually had a very good game still but Hebert I think played better uh rushing David Johnson is on the Bills 106 yards Todd Gurley almost had five yards of carry one touchdown one touchdown for James White as well and one touchdown from Deshaun Towns again he just keeps getting touchdowns like crazy uh Kenny Stills led the game actually tied with AJ Green for catches Okay, the Bills actually have a very good team. I can see why they made it this far. AJ Green had a touchdown, as did Brandon Cooks, Rich McAfee, Rob Gronkowski, and Fisher Curtis. Also, David Johnson had one. Okay, so that is going to conclude this rebuild here. Not too successful. We actually built a very good team. I think this team was capable of making it to the playoffs every single season, but Madden did not think so, I guess. But look at the confidence levels in this team. Pretty much everybody is confident here that is able to be, honestly. I feel like Gronk and Todd Gurley would be confident if they weren't already 99 overalls because I don't think it shows their confidence level if they are already a 99 overall. Yeah, because you can see he has plus two confidence from trucking, plus one from juke move. And I'm sure that's the same with everybody else. But thank you guys very much for watching, and I will talk to you guys soon. Bye.